come in later are going to be bound. Profit playground. Can I, can I steal <laughs> yeah, that one? I like that. Profit for playground. For generations to come, and, and the people who are going to be paying for this never had the initial right to vote on it. So the people, it's a small handful of people, which is why I think this is so different than other examples of local government. Um, you won't have actual notice served, uh, the impacted communities. Who would you serve it to? Uh, let, let me bring it over right. here. So yeah. if I own the land, I get to vote, right? Right. The, right. The but, statutes, that, but, but if I'm one owner, that's a vote of one. How, how does that's, that the work? The statutes require that it's a five, a five vote minimum, and it's a five signature minimum. So there's a, there's, is, it's a long convoluted process that's not that hard to go through. But basically, once you get past the county commissioners, you're fine. Um, you have to collect 30% of the, of the property owner's signatures, which at this point is you as the developer, you deed f four parcels of land to four people on paper, then you, now you have five people. You, so you yeah. have 30 percent of those five people to, to sign something that says, oh, I want this to happen. And then you have the district court says, okay, everything's legal, you can have your vote. So then you have a five-person vote. You and the four people you deed land to vote on the creation of the district, you vote on the five board members, which obviously you vote for yourself, you say, I'm going to be a board member, then us five will be the board members. And then you, you also make the final vote on the authorized debt. All right, th this is fascinating. I, I, I want to repeat this to make sure I understand this, because this is just delicious. So I own 100 acres. I want to call it Calderaville. And I need five people in order to call it a government. Four others. I, so I need yeah. four others. So I own it, but the other four people also need to own something there, right? Correct. So I go, here's a deed for you, a deed for you, a deed for you, a deed for you. Now there's five of us. If two of those five people, that's 30%, want to, um, actually 40%, I went to school. So if, <laughs> if, if, if but over 30% say, we want to have an election and form a government called Caldera Bill. All those in favor say aye, mm -hmm. and we've just created a new government right. in Colorado. You did. You and four of your best friends are people who are captive to you. In fact, I had someone come forward who was part of creating one of these, who came out as a whistleblower and said these phony, well, I mean, they're real deeds, but the purpose of them, I mean, they would even deed a square foot. Yeah. I mean, I really? mean it's really yeah. transparent. <laughs> You're kidding. No, You're I'm not. I mean, it's really. In order to vote, in order to get five people who own part of this land, here's a foot for you and a couple that, feet yeah, for that's you, the and law. that's all it takes. That's, that's all it takes. Yeah. I mean, you're a taxable elector once you own a single foot of property. So that's what they so do. We've got, we've got, from the last decade when we had 2,000 governments, we've now grown by a third. We now have 3,000 governments because five guys, and four of them don't even have to be major owners of anything, can say, we want to be a government, and, and tell me what comes with that authority. So yeah. now they're the government. Now they're in control. What, what this do they is, do with it? This leads us to the, the problem with the, the debt is that the five guys authorize the, and this is, an, this is from the state auditor's office, found out there's a, there's a, a billion dollars of authorized debt per metro district, a billion. So what they do is they, they, the five guys vote to authorize this billion dollars of debt, and that billion dollars of debt is good for 20 years. So those people in the community, 19 years, 20 years from then, are beholden to that five-person vote that happened two decades prior. Um, and, and they, they're right, let, let me see if I get this part straight, because <laughs> this just keeps getting better and it's better. It's absurd, yeah. So <laughs> by having, I own the land, I get four of my buddies, give them deeds, we now form a new government, and right then and there, do we have the ability to go into debt to up to a billion dollars? It's through the service plan that you originally filed with the county commission, you're allotted a certain amount of authorized debt. On average, it's a billion, so we'll just say it's a billion. Okay. Um, and that, that billion exists for 20 years. And that's what you use to, you, you call on that billion, it's like a, a, a billion dollar credit card. You call on that billion when you need to make uh, improvements to the land. And those people that eventually move into that plot are on the hook for up to a billion dollars. And they don't, most people don't and have that any can, idea. And that, that credit card is good for 20 years. And the other years. thing that the audit found is, first of all, they're not always spending it on what they said that they were authorized. So oversight to make sure the service plan is implemented the way they said, they, one, appear to be rubber stamped regularly. We are struggling to find an example where one has ever been denied. Oh, never. Um, uh, but hmm. even then, to make sure that the money's actually used for what it is, there's an, uh, an order of about $16 billion in missing funds. And what Justin's bringing up is collectively, just just in a sample of the of the Denver metro area metro districts, you're talking about 255 billion dollars in authorized but unissued debt. And why should anyone care about How much? that? 255 
billion. That is 15 times the entire state's budget in right. just a sampling a of sample. the front range special districts that we have out there. So let's say are, are they we, are, we, are we talking about a potential of a quarter of a trillion yes. dollars of debt that could be realized here in Colorado. Yes, and what's more is there's really no other notice because since it's authorized, theoretically these folks could all pull the trigger all at once, which would mean when you're talking about an average of a billion dollars per special district and many people, especially in the metro area, live in multiple the reality right. is they live in multiple special districts at the same time. If they really call due the whole debt at the whole time, you'd have a lot of unsuspecting taxpayers and property owners, not only upside down, but literally with liens that would basically wipe out the entire right. community. And so there's no pacing requirement about what is the uh, responsible, uh, you know, any kind of timetable for what would be reckless calling of the debt. And because no one's really paying attention when the debt's really first authorized, it is my opinion that this is the single greatest, not only growth in government, but growth in taxation where no one's paying attention um, and people stand to lose every property right they otherwise think they hold on to if we're not desperately careful and let people know, one, how we can reform the system, and two, there's a couple tips to give homeowners now for self-defense right. so they can try and um, protect themselves under the current system until we can get it changed. Okay, I, I don't want to get too lost here because I, I, I got to keep going. It took me a little while to understand how this game is being played. Let me see if I got a good recap. You have the property, you have five guys, five guys say we're a government now and then they have up to a billion dollars worth of debt. They can use that debt anytime up for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So people who move into this new development of Calderaville or whatever it is, at year 19 they might have come in at year two and they're just fine not knowing but at year 19 I as one of the one of the guys on the board, I can still say, you know, now is a good time for three hundred million dollars worth mm -hmm. of, of debt for whatever I think is is important. We in vote on it, and the guy who bought the house, not knowing that he's in right. fifteen different special districts, right. one of those special districts, his taxation just went skyrocketing. That's yeah. exactly it. You used a term called taxation without representation. I, I want to ask you about that. Is that fair? Well, it may not be technically accurate, but here's why I think it is conceptually fair. I mean, for the most part, any of us as taxpayers should at some point have a right at whatever level of government, whether it's city, state, federal, to either uh, vote directly on the tax issue or, or really participate in the elections that put the people there that we can hold accountable as to whether we agree with their taxation policy and what they do. The problem here is not only is it that original five, which is not the people who are ultimately paying the bill, so by definition they're not really ever going to be the taxpayers. Unless they live there and they don't have to live there. Right. Yeah. So you they got do guys not have to. You've got guys Probably running honest. a government who don't live in that district. And, and then me, here's the other reason why I think I think that's a fair point. We have less than 3% voter turnout of eligible voters. So when you have 100% of impacted people for up to 20 years impacted by less than 3% voter turnout, 81% of those elections of which are canceled. Let's talk about and that. And there aren't competitive races where you could even choose between two people if you could show up to your privatized off cycle May election in multiple places going on in the same time with no actual notice. Watch that's out. You're going you're to start sounding like Doug Bruce here real soon. You better be careful. Careful, lady. Uh, we watch it. All right, let's get to, let's get to this point. One real quick yeah, thing ahead. about the taxation without representation. Um, it's ver very fair to say that because the original five have voted on that authorized credit. And once that credit, if they decide, like you said, in year 19 to exercise 300 million, they don't have to go to the voters because it's already been authorized. It's already been voted upon. That first five. It, 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 it fulfills Tabor requirements. Those first five voted on it, so it's already been voted upon. But let's talk about, that's un, that's about this scary. issue that, that uh, we just heard. Cancellation, mm -hmm. that elections are being canceled. Right. Eh, how do you cancel an election it, here? So, so you got five people, they're running, for, they're running for the office, you have to have an election. You, I, yeah, if you're gonna start a brand new government in Colorado, I would think you'd have an election. Explain how this works. Well, originally the, the, the five elect themselves to be they in the original um, uh, portion of, of, of the whole process they decide whether we have five or seven board members the authorization of debt and all that so right. if there's five they'll say okay us five will be the board members upon uh, w 